after about a month, I realised that I was meeting Canadian, Australian, American, all doing the same job. But they were doing casualties as well. And over a few beers, nearest boss was 3,000 miles away, we thought, well, pass, uh, uh, casualties don't come in nice tidy packages. You're snowed under or there's none. So I joined in with them and helped. And that meant going over to Pusan, over to Korea, and if they were stuck for a bit of help, I was over there. But I was never supposed to have been in Korea. I don't know if the Air Force ever knew that I'd done, you know, nobody. I was always in the Uwe Kuni when somebody, I knew somebody was coming up. But that was it. So I would go over and I would, I would help the Americans or I would help the Aussies or Canadians. They were all there at Pusan and they were all doing the same job. Airlifting, most of them that were coming were British casualties were, were airlifted from Pusan to Kure, which is near, near Hiroshima. And that was, the British, that was the hospital. By the time we got them, they had already been, had their dressings done at forward places. Some of them were a bit of a mess. Uh, I never, uh, nothing was ever so bad that it ever turned my stomach or anything. It was just, I would, I suppose I was break my heart about them because, you, you know, they was fillers my age. Because they were all, national service was the most I was getting. And, uh, so it never, it never really bothered me. The only one that bothered me once uh, was, I was well into it, was I doing a night flight back and in the winter and Dakotas didn't even have a lining, you know, it was just a raw steel outside. And so you didn't touch, you know, you had covered in gloves and things. You never went near the screen. But if the casualty was uh, shaking at all. In other words, it was either pain or nervousness or sheer fright. If you had anything like the nursing sisters who were all Australian, who could drink us all under the table, they'd, been, they'd served the time in, in Burma, so they were hardened ladies, but the salt of the earth. But they would climb on, there's not much room on a stretcher, but they would climb on and put half of the body on to add heat to it in the winter. And uh, I did this one night, I did it a lot of times, but I did this one night and we landed at Iwakuni and they had to cut my jacket off him because he had died and he was, his blood had congealed and that was it. And that was the only one that really upset me. And then years later I laughed and said the thing, I was, it was a beautiful American flying jacket, which it was. But it, it was just, he was stuck to me. I cuddled him. You know, it was only, I say, 45 minutes. Mm. But there was no sound. But he never, never necessarily was there any sound. He had no, he, I couldn't see any face. It was just all blood and I was cuddling him. And he just had obviously expired while we were in flight. 